News, news, news. My feed is only news. I'm bored. Let's make a video. All right. This is going to be an unscripted video, which you probably noticed by me starting the video with. All right. This kitten. This kitten is being rude. Look at this kitten. It's so cute. I'll let it go now. This is going to be really quickly how I edit my photos. Uh, and I'll show you the whole workflow from shooting with my Lumix 5, which I'm filming on right now, which I just realized I won't be able to film later. That's a later me problem. Filming how I take photos, what settings I use, and then we're going to go take those photos into my computer load them into a cataloging software, uh, edit them. I'll just show you my general workflow. I want to prefix this. I'm not a professional photographer. I'm a hobbyist, but I think my workflow is interesting enough to share it with the world. Except no one will care. So let's get started. Well, what a new coincidence. You're here as well. So, so let's just talk about what I'm shooting on. Also, it's like 2 past 21, uh, 9 p.m. for those who don't use 24 hour systems, which is the wrong way to use time. Um, what am I so I'm going to be quiet, relatively. What am I shooting on? I'm shooting on the Lumix S5 with a strap that constantly gets in the way with a Sigma 35mm f1.4. Let's sit down. So, what's the settings? It's pretty dark, as it's 21. Um, so we're shooting wide open. We're gonna go to photo mode, of course. We're shooting f1.4 straight. Um, I'm going to shoot in standard mode because that's the most comfortable for photographing for me. Um, I'm shooting in raw and standard JPEG quality because I like to have a JPEG to preview and still have the raw. But if you want, you can go into picture quality and turn off the JPEG saving. Record a raw image only. Uh, I like to have the JPEG even though it eats storage space. Full frame, um, not HFG photo, no higher resolution, but it's, I think it's pretty much default settings. It turned off as much as I could. I forgot to turn off video editing compensation, apparently. Um, yeah, so we've got the basics. What else is there to say? I'm going to be shooting at auto white balance because I'm lazy. 500 ISO, f1.4, and I'm going to adjust the shutter speed accordingly. Oops. Let's take some photos. God damn it. All right, back at my desk. I'm using Linux, but this should work fine on the Windows as well. Uh, probably also on Mac OS. I don't know. Uh, I don't really care, I'm going to open Digicam. Digicam is the software I use to catalog my photos. Uh, and I have a lot of photos. I have them sorted in main unsorted and like old images. And I have a few other folders that aren't visible right now because they're only on my next cloud and in my backups and not on my computer because I don't have enough space for all the f flipping photos. Anyways, as you can see, I have a folder for each day and for 2024 07 which is today, I already have a folder because I already took photos today and already imported them. But we're going to go import and you have to insert your SD card. So now that I inserted my SD card, I can click import. And as you can see, I have a lot of photos on this SD card. Actually, that's not that much. And 
I have a filter down here set to raw files. Uh, that will only give me raw image files. I have, there's a few other filters and I also have a filter called raw and video. So if I wanted to import video as well, I could do that, I guess. So we've got photos here that are random and these are the photos we just took. So either you can say, click this little, little arrow here and say download new, then it will download all files that aren't already downloaded. It remembers that somehow. Uh, as you can see, this file, for example, has a check mark as do all these other ones. And uh, if you don't want to import all the files, you can select a few. Hey cat, I'm currently recording a video. Now, before you download the photos, I want to only download these few. So I select them and I'll go say camera file names, ch change case to leave as is, blah, blah, blah. And in auto creation of albums, we can say date based sub albums. So it will create these album names automatically. Um, I don't like extension based sub albums. I use state format ISO because I'm a programmer and I'm reasonable. And down here in DNG convert options, I select convert raw images to DNG container. That allows, especially with the GH5 Mark II, I think for a while, the raw editors that support it. So I started that and I quite like having one raw file format for all my photographs. So we do that. Enable lossless compression, JPEG preview, I set to medium. I think it's defaulting to full size. Yeah, but medium is enough, I think. And that's it. So now that we set all the options, we could do JPEG on the fly operations, but we don't. We can say right click, download selected, uh, select the folder. I have folders for each year, as you can see because uh, at some point, as you can see, I have a lot of subfolders. I took, at some point I took photos nearly every day. So it became crowded and that's why I made subfolders. So you select the folder of the year if you want to do that as well uh, and press okay. And now it's gonna download and convert all the photos and that takes a little bit. So now that we downloaded our photos, we can close this dialog and stupidly, it forgets what's selected. So it selects the parent folder. It's really annoying. But now that we downloaded our photographs, we can see we have these photographs here from before and we have these few photos here. So let's just go through the photos uh, one by one. If you double click a file in this preview, It'll show you the large preview. I don't like that photo, so we'll leave it. I don't like that photo, so we'll leave it. That's my setup. Isn't it creative? I like that photo um, for argument's sake. So I'll press Control 1, which marks it as one star. You can mark it as five star by pressing Control 5, or you can unmark it by pressing the same combination again. I mark them as control one for photos I like and control two for choke photos because you can then, well, we'll show you that later. Uh, and we've got a few photos here. Those are overexposed to all hell. That is skewed. That is uh, kind of straight. That's straighter. That's blurry. Oh, look, that's a well exposed photo. And I have two of them. That's my cat. Um, so I, can choose which photo I prefer. I kind of prefer this one. So I mark that as one star. And then in filters to the right here, we can select rating greater than or equal to one. And now we have only the photos we rated. So we can press to edit this. We can press a four. It'll by oh, default open it in some random editor. I don't know what default is, but if we go here to configure Digicam, so the three dots, settings, configure Digicam, uh, and in image editor left here, uh, raw behavior, we can say always open the raw input tool to customize settings. And 
I selected raw input using raw therapy. Uh, once we have that, we can press F4 and this image editor will open and raw therapy opens. So what is raw therapy? Raw therapy is a raw image file editor and you can zoom with mouse scroll. This is out of focus. That's depressing. What cat? So you see some information on the top left. You see a histogram. I think I set that up. Uh, you can collapse this if you want, if you don't care about it. And you can collapse the right side, though the right side is the important side. So um, this is a horrible photo, by the way. The camera is not in focus. This is what happens when you shoot at f1.4. Anyways, uh, I think the exposure of this photo is fine. But if the exposure weren't fine, we can change the exposure setting here. Let's actually raise it a little bit. And normally I just do a simple S curve. I don't like the default curve. I just play with the curve a little bit until it looks about right. As I said in the beginning, I'm a beginner. You could probably just use the contrast slider to achieve the same effect. But the curve gives me more control and allows me to choose the look I like. Um, uh, if you have something against a very bright background and you don't want the background to be drowned out, you can use dynamic range compression. But be really careful because dynamic range compression takes a while to load. So if we press this, you can see it processes and processes and processes and it's done. It takes forever. And this is only on the preview render. So what dynamic range compression does is it compresses the dynamic range well obviously so it makes bright parts uh dimmer and it i think it looks really nice if you have like a uh, a subject in front of a window and you don't want the window to be completely blown out you can do dynamic range compression this obviously only really works with raw files i'm babbling anyways then i go into uh, noise reduction. As you can see, I, I had to shoot a quite high ISO, so I use impulse noise reduction, which gets rid of annoying dots, and noise reduction, which reduces the color noise, as you can maybe see, just makes the image look nicer. Uh, you could reduce luminance noise as well if you use uh, this slider, but that starts having the issues noise reduction normally has. And I'm not that fussed about noise in images, to be frank, but I don't like color noise. I really don't dislike color noise. Uh, otherwise, I sometimes enable local contrast, which just increases the contrast of the image. Uh, but right now I don't think it's necessary. Uh, then I'll go into the settings here. White balance was is in camera. You can change the white balance. You can pick white balance. If you think this is white, then you're blind. But also you can do that. But I'll leave it at camera. Uh, even though it's a little bit blue, we can change it a little bit warmer. Now it's way too warm. That's better. Okay. So now that we did our white balance, we can change vibrance if we wanted to. So we have like a well vibrance slider. I think it's different from saturation somehow. I never cared uh, why. Right now, I don't think this needs to be more vibrant. Um, one interesting thing, if you're digitizing film, you can enable film negative. I do that sometimes. Uh, and one thing I really like to do is use film simulation. I have a lot of LUTs uh, that uh, emulate film. So if you want to emulate like a uh, Kodak Elite Color 200, you can do that. Uh, and you have to enable effects. So and it just applies a lot, a freely lot, that's, that's fine. Other than that, I rarely do anything, but in this case, I kind of want to crop the image. So let's enable crop, uh, set the aspect ratio to four to three, because this is a three to two ratio, and we can select an area. We can move the area with, by holding shift. Uh, we can resize the area. 
uh, but I dislike the framing, so let's frame it a little bit differently. Now that I'm done, I want the same settings to be applied to the next photograph, so I'll save the current profile. I'll save it in Photos under main unsorted 2024, 24704, and I'll call it fun. Oops. I just like this edit, this save thing. Fun tutorial keep a preset. It saves it as a PP3 file. Uh, and once you saved it, you can just close it. You don't have to save, you don't have to do anything. And your computer will scream. And then it's done. It processed the photo. And after it processed the photo, I normally say save changes. And you can close that. And now there's a JPEG next to your DNG file. Let's do the same thing for the Your Cool, cool Card, which, by the way, as I said, is available for printing yourself at cool.lukeresvalka.at. Uh, to load a preset, you press the Load from Preset from File button. And we're in the folder, Fun Tutorial Preset. You can select that. And uh, change the framing because obviously that is a little bit different now and I think that is fine if you want it you can enable guide rule of thirds but who needs rule of thirds so now that I think this image is good we can save it it's a little bit odd with the white balance but who cares uh, save changes and now we have this JPEG. And if you have a lot of photos, if you converted a lot of photos, you can set a MIME type filter to JPEG files, select them, and drag them wherever you want, like Discord, which is on another screen. So you don't see that. Anyways, that's pretty much my workflow. That's how I edit photos. That's how I get them onto my computer, sort them. Uh, rate them and yeah I hope this was helpful um, and you're cool if you're watching this bye